Hi folks, I'm Nate, a technical marketing manager with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Today I'm here to show you how to deploy a standard Red Hat Enterprise Linux system on Microsoft Azure. And I'm doing this basically because there's a couple things that are a little confusing sometimes when people try to deploy RHEL to any cloud provider. Questions about how do I pay for RHEL and where am I getting RHEL from are difficult to answer sometimes. So hopefully this video helps clarify that. Now, if you want to see how to, how to deploy a custom RHEL image using the Red Hat Insights Image Builder, you should look in the description of this video. In the description, there will be a link to a video where I walk you through how to design a custom image using Image Builder and then deploy it to Microsoft Azure. But in this video, we're going to take the stock images that come from Azure and deploy RHEL that way. One thing you're going to want to make a decision on before you deploy RHEL is how you want to pay for RHEL. Now, you can pay in a model that we refer to as pay-as-you-go, where you take, uh, you, you deploy RHEL using a standard image, you pay Microsoft Azure for the licensing fees, and all of that gets passed through to Red Hat. Not all of it. The RHEL subscription gets passed through to Red Hat. The Microsoft Azure part gets, of course, consumed by Microsoft. Or you can bring your own subscription. Bringing your own subscription means that you pay Microsoft simply for the use of their platform, and then you pay Red Hat for a subscription. So perhaps you already have subscriptions that you'd like to attach to a RHEL system. There's ways to do that as well. In this example, we're going to use a pay-as-you-go system just because it's simple, and it's probably the most common way that people are using RHEL on a cloud provider. All right, so let's jump into the Azure console, and I'll show you how to build a new system on Microsoft Azure. All right, so here we are at the Microsoft Azure console. Um, there's lots of stuff you can do from here. What we're gonna do is work with virtual machines. Now, obviously my console already has things like things I've already accessed, things I've already um, already worked with here. So it's, it's sort of pre-populated. Yours may look a lot more blank than this, right? What you're gonna wanna do is get to virtual machines. Now I've got it right here at the top here. Uh, you may not, if you don't, the menu on the side here, you can find virtual machines about halfway down. If that doesn't work out for you, you can just type it in the search here at the top. And there you go, virtual machines. So this gets you to the list of instances you've got on Microsoft Azure. Maybe you've got instances. If you're brand new to Azure, maybe you don't, okay? If you don't, then your list will look very similar to what mine does right here, completely empty. So we're gonna make a new VM by clicking the Create button up here at the top. We're gonna to select an Azure Virtual Machine. And it brings us to a very relatively simple wizard to walk through to, uh, to deploy a new system. So first thing we have to select is a subscription. I've only got one, but this is basically how you intend to pay for your new instance. Um, speaking of how you pay for instances, there's two ways that you can pay for RHEL on a cloud provider. One of them is pay as you go, which is what this is gonna assume you're going to do, right? Pay as you go means that you pay Microsoft for not only the time and resources you're using on their cloud, but also the, the license for RHEL. It could be paid for with through the cloud provider, or it could be paid directly to Red Hat. If you pay directly to Red Hat and you want to attach a subscription, then you're using what's called bring your own subscription, right? And you use the Red Hat Cloud Access Program to make that a little easier to, uh, to deploy, right? So for the moment, though, we're going to use pay as you go and I'll show you how that works from here. All right, so subscription one, uh, you do have to have a payment source attached to this. If you're just on their free trial, uh, I believe it'll still consume the free trial credits that they give you, but you have to have a payment source attached uh, because this is not just a thing that is offered by Microsoft. Okay, so enough about money. The resource group, this is basically a, a definition that you've probably already made inside of your reserve portal. If you haven't, you may have to create one. You can create one right here if you want to. Virtual machine name, this is pretty straightforward. We're gonna call it rel, because we're super creative. Region, this is the region in which it's going to run. And these are geographic regions all around the world based on where Microsoft has data centers that they run Azure out of. We're gonna pick US East 2 just because it's the default and I really don't care where this is gonna run. But if you have reasons that you need it to run in certain regions, that's how you do it. Okay, now availability options. Uh, this is for things like availability zones and scalability. I'm not gonna to touch that right now. 
trusted launch virtual machines, the security type here. This is important only because the trusted launch um, implies that you have a TPM in the VM. Now, if you don't know what a TPM is, that's a trusted platform module. It's how modern computers store cryptographic keys in a way that people can't steal them, right? Azure offers that as a feature. And if you think you're going to be leveraging that within your operating system, you want to make sure this is turned on. Now, there's also standard, which gives you a basic VM that does not have a TPM. Um, but I'm going to recommend that you leave the trusted launch virtual machines option turned on because RHEL does support a TPM and there's features in RHEL that you can utilize if you have a TPM. That does mean, however, you need to select a generation two VM from, or a generation two image, I should say, from Azure when you select an image, which we're gonna do in a moment. Just keep that in mind. On to images, you can see that by default, it's picked Ubuntu for me. I don't wanna run Ubuntu, I wanna run Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But in the list here, it only shows Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.7. 8.7 is a fine release of RHEL, it's not the latest though. So if you want the latest rel, you have to click on this see all images button. What that's gonna do is it's gonna bring you to the Microsoft Azure marketplace. We're gonna do that. So here we are in the marketplace. You can see there's a whole bunch of options in here. You can run Windows, you can run Ubuntu, and here's Red Hat down here. Now there's something I wanna call out here. So first we're gonna search for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. In the marketplace, you'll come across um, RHEL that is officially Red Hat's release of RHEL. And then you'll come across third-party vendors that are also selling RHEL through the marketplace. Now, there's reasons that they do that. These are generally partners of Red Hat. So, you know, by all means, you, you're welcome to do business with them. But just keep in mind that the vendor is listed underneath each listing. So you can see this one here I've got... I'm hovering over Red Hat Enterprise Linux SAP HA Update Services. It says Red Hat Inc. underneath it, and it's got our logo at the top. That's how you can tell that it's a RHEL, official Red Hat RHEL image. This one down here says Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.7 from Pro Computers. Now, Pro Computers may be a fine vendor to work with, but they're not Red Hat. So if you care where you're getting RHEL from, then this is how you know. This is how this is what you want to pay attention to when you're picking something from the marketplace. Now, we're going to pick Red Hat Enterprise Linux right here. This is just the basic deployment of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. We're going to select a version here, and you can see where we've got Gen 1 and Gen 2s of a lot of the different versions of RHEL here. We're going to pick a Gen 2 RHEL 9 from the marketplace, and now we're back to the launch wizard, and there it is, populated right as the image. So now that you've chosen RHEL as your platform of choice on your cloud provider, you may not realize that RHEL comes with a lot of extra services that you're entitled to simply by having a RHEL subscription. That includes if you have a pay-as-you-go subscription. Just because you're paying for RHEL through your cloud provider doesn't mean you get any less value out of RHEL. After all, RHEL is more than just a Linux kernel with support behind it. You also get access to Red Hat Insights. There's also a number of other tools that you're going to want to understand and know how to use in order to fully get the most value out of your RHEL subscription. In the description of this video, I'm going to put a link to a blog that coincidentally I wrote about all of the extra value that you can get even as a tenant in the cloud on top of RHEL. You should head on over to red.ht slash RHEL dash cloudstart for more information. Now, obviously we need to pick what architecture because we picked an X64, that's a 64-bit x86 uh, image, it automatically populated the architecture to x64. There were ARM versions in there, so if you need to run on ARM or want to run on ARM, you can select that. But I picked x86, so it picked this for me. Okay, now, um, spot discount, we're not gonna change that. That has to do with pricing and agreements you might have with Microsoft. Um, the size, this is, this is something you wanna look into because this directly impacts how much it costs you to run this VM, right? Now this is gonna charge you per month, it says. Uh, this is the estimate per month, right? I think it bills you in a smaller increment than monthly, so it's not gonna bill you immediately for a whole month. Uh, all right, so you can see there's different sizes here. 
This one here, this is much cheaper. This one here is much more expensive, but you can see that this gets one CPU and one gig of memory. This is one CPU and three and a half gig of memory, right? So you're gonna wanna choose the size of your VM accordingly. You can also click on this see all sizes here and get more options for how you'd like to size your VM. All right, how are we gonna access the system? We're gonna select an SSH public key. You can also select a password if you'd rather. And then you can give the default user a name. So I could like make this Nate if I wanted to. And what it'll do is when the system is built, it'll automatically provision me a user and it'll put in that user my uh, SSH key that I've already added to Microsoft Azure. Now, if you don't have one, you can generate one right here. See here it says generate new key pair. And then it'll let you give it a name. I can pick one that's already in here or I can upload one. So if I click use an existing public key, I can copy and paste the public key that I've already got generated if you already have one. If you wanna make a new one, you can use generate or I've already got one stored in here that I generated in some previous uh, demonstration that I did. I'm gonna pick that one right there, Nate's key. This will ask me what ports I want open to the world. I'm gonna leave port 22 open. See, I can also pick 80 and 443 if I was going to use uh, web. There's other, you can of course open other ports, but I'm not gonna go into that in this particular demonstration. All right, now speaking of things I'm not gonna go into, you can see at the top of the list here, there's a bunch of other tabs for disks and networking and management and all of this. If I click the next button at the bottom here, the next button will take me to disks, and then I can answer questions about disks. Then next will take me to networking, and I can answer questions about networking. I'm not gonna go into the details of those because the whole point of this is to show you how to deploy RHEL, uh, and this stuff is all dependent on how your infrastructure wants, is supposed to work on Azure, and I don't really have any of that defined because I don't have a bunch of infrastructure already deployed. You're gonna have to make these decisions based on your, your needs and your use case. So if I click the review and create button, it's gonna bring me to the review page. This is where I can look over all the options that I put in. It's going to let me uh, go back if I need to change things. Uh, but see right here, if I scroll down, it's warning me that SSH is open to the world. Generally, you don't want SSH open to the world, but again, this is a very basic setup. Um, all right, and it gives me a review, right? What subscription am I using? What resource group is it in? What's the name of the system? What image am I using? And here's all the things that I skipped over, disks and networking and management. These are all things that you can look at right here if you want to, and then you can go back to one of those tabs and change them if you see something in here that doesn't match what you want. However, I'm just gonna click the create button because I don't really care about those things at the moment. And now what this is gonna do is it's going to submit it to uh, the VM service on Microsoft Azure. And you can see deployment is in progress. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna wait a few minutes, maybe speed up time a bit so you don't have to stand here and watch me twiddle my thumbs while um, Azure provisions me a VM. All right, there we go. The deployment is complete. You can see I get a little notification at the top that my de deployment was complete. If I had left this screen, you know, and I was doing other things in Azure, it would still deploy in the background. You don't have to sit here and wait for it. So if we click go to resource, it's gonna take us directly to that item in our um, Azure portal. If I went back to home and then virtual machines, you'd see it right here in the list, right? If I click on this, it takes me to that same screen. If you need to know how to connect to this system, you can click on the connect button at the top here. Now, obviously Microsoft Azure has uh, options to connect to Windows hosts using remote desktop and uh, Linux hosts using SSH. Uh, so if you click on SSH here, which will come up automatically simply because you're already, it knows you're on a Linux system. And it gives you, it gives you basically the steps that you can use to connect to your system. It even fills in that name that I gave it during the launch wizard, right? Remember I told it what name to create my user as? It even is smart enough to auto-populate that here for me. So literally, if you take the private key, whether you generated one or you already had one and imported it during the wizard, you take your private key and the name, and it even gives you the IP address. If you just copy this, and then when you go to connect, you just have to populate that key name, right? 
And that should do it. All right, so now we've deployed a system on Microsoft Azure. Now, this will this will start billing on this pretty much immediately. So if you're doing this for test purposes, make sure that you are cognizant of that. Uh, you do what you wanted to do with it. Make sure you turn it off when you're done. Unless you are actually spinning up a production system, obviously, don't turn that off. Okay, so now you've seen a very simple example of how you might deploy Red Hat Enterprise Linux on Microsoft Azure. I hope I've covered all the options for you, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment.